this patient was referred to me for endodontic retreatment of tooth number eight. Look at these teeth. No trauma. Patient denies any trauma to, to these teeth. None whatsoever. I kept asking him. I asked him, uh, did you have ortho treatment, braces? And he said no. So denied any type of trauma to these teeth. Anyways, patient said a few days ago he had noticed a pimple on his gum. And uh, he had gone and seen his dentist. His dentist put him on antibiotics and referred the patient to me. First of all, there was no need for antibiotics. If there's a sinus tract, there's no need for antibiotics. Antibiotics only indicated if there's facial and or fascial swelling. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, um, according to the patient, uh, the root canal was done a few years ago. I said, what was the reason for the root canal? Patient said he couldn't remember. And this is a 29-year-old patient, by the way. All right. So, do I need a CBCT? I personally do not. If you need a CBCT and you know how to read it, go ahead and order one. Get one. But I don't need a CBCT. I take a couple of different angulation PAs and, I'm, and I can read my x-rays and I'm good to go. Take a look here. This is one angulation, right? Look at another angulation here. Look at this. Look at tooth number seven. Look at tooth number seven here. What's going on with tooth number seven? I know what's going on. I want you to tell me what's going on. Look at tooth number eight. Looks like single cone obturation. Tooth number nine also. Single cone. It looks like the same dentist did both root canals. All right. And we can see the large peripheral lucency here. Single cone obturation. What? is going on here what is all of this what is going on here right so if you don't know by now we're dealing with here we're dealing with an inflammatory root resorption inflammatory root resorption there has to be trauma at some point to these teeth even though patient denies trauma but i think that at some point somewhere there was trauma to these teeth anyways discuss options with the patient went over his options He's going to have to extract number nine, as you can see. There's nothing left of tooth number nine. And the patient wanted to try to see if we could save the tooth. In situations like that, I tell the patient, prognosis is very guarded. I can redo the root canal, and I will use MTA and repair this area here, the resorptive defect. But I cannot guarantee that the infection will go away, and I cannot guarantee that your body will stop eating away at this tooth, rejecting this tooth, eating away at it, and destroying, destroying it. Patient said, I don't, I'm, I'm going to lose this tooth. I want to try to see if we can save this one. And I said, okay. This was the clinical presentation of the tooth. You can see tooth number eight has a sinus tract right here. And tooth number nine has a sinus tract right there. But that, the, the tooth we worked on was tooth number eight right here. And again, you can see the sinus tract right there. Number nine will be extracted. This was the gutta percha I pulled out of the canal in one piece. And you see the surface, that film on the surface of this gutta percha? If you, could, if you could put this gutta percha under an electron microscope, you would see that that film is actually biofilm. And there are trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of bacteria and bacterial colonies form that biofilm. When you deal with, with a tooth like this, apex locator, electronic apex locator usually doesn't work. We tried it. As soon as I put the file inside of the canal, it started to beep. And of course, I wasn't to length, so I knew. It doesn't, electronic apex locator, that's one of its weaknesses. It doesn't work when, when you have a tooth like this with wide open apices and inflammatory resorption. Also doesn't work on when you, same scenario when you have open apices on, on a child. You want to get a working link on a child but with a tooth with an op with open apices. So you need to immediately, don't waste any time, go to a working length x-ray. This is file 80. And file 80 was loose even on this. So I'm assuming the apical diameter here was 100 plus, maybe 105 or 110. All right, so the working length turned out to be 21 millimeters here. When the, when the apical diameter is this large and you're dealing with inflammatory root resorption and at some point you're anticipating possibly maybe in the future the need for an apicoactomy, the best thing to do would be MTA. Place an MTA plug. Place MTA. MTA, when you have a, a, a situation like this, 
MTA seals much, much better than gutta percha and seal. I mean, if you want to put a gutta percha here, I mean, what kind of gutta percha do you have? To, are you going to use 110 gutta percha? I mean, it just makes no sense to use gutta percha here. You need to repair this this uh, inflammatory defect, resorptive defect. You can't you can't repair it with gutta percha and sealer. And here is the post op. So take a look here. This is all MTA. So I used white MTA and I obturated half of the canal with white MTA. And I was able to fill and repair that resorptive defect and also create a nice apical seal. I have some MTA, MTA extrusion. Is that going to cause any issues? No. MTA is one of the most biocompatible material that we have. And I've posted many cases of MTA extrusion with long, long-term follow-ups that show that MTA extrusion does not affect the, the healing process. I know some clinicians who actually use MTA as bone grafting material. All right. I had a case myself and I filled the entire lucency there, the entire defect, periapical defect there with MTA. And I had a six month follow up on it that showed that, that there was almost complete healing. I can't find that case for the life of me. I've gone through all my cases, all my patients, and I can't find it. It's there. I've gone back a few years, but I think it was in the beginning when I had just first started that my, my practice here, like 15, 16 years ago. It's one of those. So I, I haven't gone that far back. I, I wish I could show you that case anyways. But uh, here is the post up. This is another angulation, another angulation, and this is another angulation. All right, so we did this in one appointment, MTA, and then followed by gutta percha and sealer. And uh, we temporized the tooth and referred the patient back to his dentist for the permanent restoration. I asked the patient to please come back and see me in six months for a follow-up. He agreed. Usually when they have no symptoms and no issues and the pimple, the sinus tract goes away, they don't come back. But uh, I hope he comes back in six months so I can post a six-month follow-up for you guys. But here it is. MTA. And now if I ever need to do an apical, it's so easy. It takes, takes very little time because I don't need to retro-prep and retrofill anymore. 